Driverless car ethics. We are probably all aware that driverless vehicles are coming. They'll certainly be safer than the average human driver. However, what happens when a crash is unavoidable? How should the car be programmed to behave? Imagine a situation where your driverless vehicle is driving along a street and a boy jumps out in front of the car, chasing his puppy. The car cannot physically stop in time, so there are only two possible options. Continue straight or swerve right. Let's assume that swerving left is not an option due to a barrier on the left-hand side of the street. Most of us would agree that running over the puppy is a preferable option to running over the boy. I don't think any human in their right mind would advocate for running over the boy instead of the puppy. This situation indicates that there is an innate list of priorities that driverless vehicles should be programmed to uphold. Number one should be protect humans. I think that's a given. Now, that could refer to the people within the vehicle as well as people outside. Number two should probably be protect animals. Of course, this wouldn't include small insects, rodents and the like. I guess the focus should be on larger animals and pets. Don't get me wrong, this is not me saying that the life of a mouse isn't important. It's just that in a court of law, no judge is going to prosecute a vehicle manufacturer for killing a rat over a Dalmatian. Next, we should probably have avoid property damage. This would include damage to the vehicle as well as to third party property such as a letterbox. And finally, avoid environmental damage. Again, this is not me saying that the environment is not important, but if we have a situation between smashing into a parked motorbike or smashing into a bush, then of course smashing into a bush is the preferable option. Using this list is easy from an ethical point of view. Humans before animals, animals before property, and property before the natural environment. Some might argue that property should come before animal life, but imagine a situation where a person is bent over on their hands and knees. It might be difficult for the AI to distinguish between this and say a dog. Consequently, both human and animal life should come before property and plants. So let's try to use this list. A boy jumps out on the road chasing his skateboard. Of course we should swerve to avoid the boy and smash his skateboard instead. Sure, Billy will be upset, but his parents will be thankful. What about a dog and a letterbox? Well, according to our list, the letterbox has got to go. How about an antelope and a shrubbery? Sorry shrubbery, your days are numbered. And just one more. What if we replace the shrubbery with a large tree? According to our list, should we strike the tree? No, we shouldn't, because smashing head-on into a tree would endanger the occupants of the vehicle. Striking the antelope would be less of a risk to the human passengers. The same could be said for the option between an animal and, say, a brick wall. Smashing into the brick wall would go against the first priority of protecting human life. So, using our list is fairly straightforward from an ethical point of view. However, ethical dilemmas start to arise when we have situations within each of these categories. What if a boy jumps out in front of us and the only other option is to smash into a lady in a wheelchair? How do we determine who gets hit? Some might say that smashing into a wheelchair is of greater risk to the vehicle's occupants than smashing into the small boy. Others might say that the wheelchair might offer some protection to the lady, giving her a greater chance of survival. Either way, it's a hard question to answer and certainly an ethical dilemma. What if a boy jumps out in front of us and the only other option is to smash into a group of stock traders? Well, of course, we should smash into the traders as the world doesn't really need them anyway. I'm joking. Of course we'd have to program driverless vehicles to minimise harm, so sadly, the option causing least harm would be to continue our course, striking the boy. What if the opposite situation occurred? Should we swerve to avoid striking the group of people? I guess we'd have to. What if the group of people who stepped out on the street were drunk? Due to their intoxication and stupidity, the car swerves and kills an innocent boy. I think in that situation, the drunk people should be charged with the manslaughter of the boy, as they were directly responsible for causing the car to swerve, killing the boy. What about a situation between smashing into a brick wall or running over the boy? Should the occupants of the vehicle take precedence over the boy? What if the only occupant of the vehicle was also a boy? Who lives and who dies? Should the car be programmed to rely on its safety features and smash into the wall, hoping that the boy within doesn't sustain life-threatening injury? These are difficult questions to answer. Of course, all these situations are edge-case scenarios. 
Typically, a driverless vehicle will be able to avoid all damage, both to property and people. But as the numbers of these vehicles increase on our roads, there is more and more likelihood of these edge cases occurring. The ethical decisions required to be made by driverless vehicles are not trivial. My prediction is that there will be lots of accidents that occur that couldn't possibly have been anticipated. Car manufacturers will consequently be forced to modify their code to cater for more and more extreme situations. There will certainly be a learning curve just as there has been for any new technology. These ethical dilemmas need to be discussed, as ultimately, they'll be affecting you and me in our day-to-day -day lives.